This is the first uh, episode that I've ever done on the Serious Strength TV, so welcome on board. Thank you. Um, but today we've got Lewis, and I'm, I'm going to ask you how to pronounce your second name, actually. Oh, it's just Bing, like the, not the Bing. same changing. Right, okay, so it's a bit confusing, I thought it was something like Bion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I've told, I've told from that before, anyway, yeah. but anyway. No, so we've got Lewis here today, then. Um, Lewis... I don't know you massively, but obviously you've been, you know, you're in my gym quite often, um, coached by one of my best friends, and really, I, I guess it's the whole point of these shows, and the reason I want to do this is, is simply to, you know, to, to inspire people, um, educate people, and to, you know, to really entertain people of, of like what the strongman world is about, who's in it, and exactly the things that people get up to. Um, obviously, the biggest thing, you know, first of all, for you is that you've just done the 400, haven't you? So, yeah, definitely. So that's something that you know we'll, we'll go into detail on all, on all the different bits. But before we get started, anyway, we've got we've got to do something first. So this is this is a crocodile, and we're going to do it every single episode uh-huh. and see who wins. Uh-huh. And you've got to tell everyone if I win. Uh-huh. Right. So all you have to do is press the teeth. Yeah, we'll, take it, we'll take it in turns. Uh-huh. And it, you've already you've got yeah, this. Yeah, I've seen that on YouTube a few times. Yeah. Right, you watched me get it first time. Nope. <laughs> Shit. He's a bit uh, more. Oh. <laughs> right. Wow. So now you've got to tell everyone that I want a crocodile. <laughs> it's actually Leo's toys. But anyway, right. Let's get into it then. So, yeah. So with with this uh, show, let's educate. You know, inspire people. You know, tell your journey. Um, and, and really, really try and supercharge. You know, the industry and get people knowing exactly what's going on. Um, for me, like to see what you've done so far. I mean, I'm I'm inspired because at the end of the day, I think I look at it as I mean, how old are you, how old are you now? I just turned, well twenty. Just, just so you just turned twenty now. So Lewis is twenty, and at twenty, I was drinking a lot. I was pff, partying far too much. Do you know what I mean? It was like a for me to look at you now. I think actually, like I wish I could re sort of like live my life and and do that sort of thing. So. Hats off to you, like you know, for being in that position. But so let's let's start off with the four hundred then. So you've pulled four hundred kg. Yeah. How did it feel? <laughs> um, the heaviest lift in my life, like the the biggest grind I've ever had. It was like it was quite unexpected on the day because I went into the session planning to pull more than what I pulled in the competition in June, which was three thirty one. And after my last warm up, my mate was like, ah, just just. Put a 400 on it because why not? And I was I was gonna go 380. Or so, so it wasn't actually planned that day. Then, I know. So uh, five days prior, Mark said, Mark, my coach said, on the weekend, have some fun, let us some steam. So on Wednesday, which is my rest day, I put the suit on just to get the triple fly suit on to get mm. used to it because I can't really breathe in it. I said, okay, I can't to breathe in it today. So on Saturday, we'll put it on, crank it tight, see what we can do, and. Uh, I like taking big jumps. So I did the 340, and the 340 felt like much better than the 270 before it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, I know I'm in good shape. And I know that if I can get the weight about an inch or so above my knee, there's a good chance I'll be able to just ride it off my, my quads. And um, that's what I did. And after I, I, I did the lift, I dropped it on the floor, and I was like, oh my god. Like, I didn't, <laughs> didn't realise it for half an hour. I was like, I, I didn't. Ex- I didn't expect it. I was kind of optimistic. So thirty kilo PB without a peak or well, I was yeah. feeling quite tired. And uh, yeah, it was very, very good. Because before that, you at our comp, you was going to do it, weren't you? So what did you do on the comp now? I can't remember. Uh, well, I did three thirty and I pulled out because that I was it. Yeah, yeah. I was doing a calorie deficit at that point, so I, I lost about. So when I pulled the three seventy one in June, I was uh, a lot heavier. I was one sixty kilo. Yeah. And back in September time, I was about one forty seven. So I lost about thirteen kilo in those. Too, yeah, too, too drastic at that point. Yeah. yeah. So I got into the competition that I did my last session with 280 uh, in the training and it felt really good. But then when you get over uh, like 320, 330 threshold, you know how good you were feeling on that day. And yeah, I know yeah, after yeah. 330, I had to hitch it a bit. I thought, okay, there's no way I'm going to be at 371. So I just I let it be for yeah. another day. But how smart is that, right? That you, did you understand that already? I think it's, and again, like, you know, hats off to you for being <laughs> that smart, you know, and be able to do that because I think a lot of people will still think, no, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. You know, obviously at that competition at ours, when you actually pulled out, I get it, I understand it, and a few people are like, oh, but he's sure, he's sure he can't, you know, is it? And it's like, look, you know when you know. Yeah, right? I'm pretty good at knowing. Yeah. Like, especially with Dennis, because I've been doing them ever since I started the gym, which was three and a half years ago. And I can kind of tell by even my penultimate warm up how I'm feeling that day. If I'm feeling in like 
PB form where I'm feeling okay, keep it lighter. Mm. Training. Yeah. So what like what's your background then? So I, I, I sort of briefly know, but you're you throw, don't you, for Yeah, so I started off in athletics in twenty ten as a sprinter and a long jumper. And uh, How heavy were you then? Oh I was yeah, I was ten years old, so I think when I was ten years old I was about ten stone, which is about sixty kilo. Right. And so you don't like sprinting now? No. Nah. <laughs> But um, at, back in under 11s when I was 10 years old, I was always into the 100 metres and the long jump. Yeah. And back then I was actually the fastest in the UK as a 10 year old in 100 metres. I ran nice. a 13.8. And then um, just from all the heavy, uh, all the running, the bounding, my knees kind of got a bit messed up. So I had to uh, take a year out because I had some issues with them. I put I quite a few bit of weight on, so I went to the throwing side, the javelin and the shot put. Yeah. And then in back in like 2017, my kind of shot put career kind of took off. I got my first England vest. I went to uh, Dublin for a competition and I came second. Then 2018 was the year where I made my first GB vest, which I went to Hungary yeah. uh, for the European under 18s. Then 2019, I got the European under 20s. 2020, there was COVID, but we did get some competitions. And in 2020, I was ranked third in the world for my age. In yeah, shot put. nice. So, have you always wanted to do that, or is it something like you, dad's pushed um, you to do, or? I wanted to be a sprinter when I was younger. I was always running everywhere, like, I was uh, very, like I say, fast switch dominant. No matter what I do, rugby, football, sprinting, long jump, I was always very fast. But then when I got that injury with my knee, so I literally didn't participate in any sport kind of sport. I was all walking for a year, mm. and obviously when you're not doing much activity for a year, and you're eating a bit more, um kind of piles on a bit and I decided to do some throwing. I did do a few sprint comps after my knee got better but for some reason I was just so much better at shot put already. I was already back in the top 15 in the UK when I hadn't really done much training Yeah. and then within like two years I was ranked first. I was like okay I'm going to stick at this. Yeah and, and do you think that's you pushing you to your limit or, or, do, you, or, do, you, or do you feel you're quite a natural? Um, I think with shot put I'm definitely because most people with shot put they either do two techniques they do a rotation or a glide and I was stand throwing further than like most of the people who were doing the full full technique. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I actually made the European, I was 10 centimetres off the European standard with the, just a stand throw. So after that comp, I knew that, okay, I can actually probably get somewhere and shot put. Nice, yeah. And, and, that, and that's, is that still going now? So you're still... Um, not so much. So since September, um, since I've partnered with Mark, I've enjoyed the uh, Strongman much more because with Strongman there's a lot more variety there's like 50 loads of events you have to train for where a shot but I do enjoy it still but I can't really I don't have that same drive now the drive's gone to Strongman and yeah. I want to pursue Strongman I want to win titles break records whereas shot but I still do it but not as competitively as I, as I did previously yeah obviously your dad's really supportive in what you do right yeah where does he want you to go does he, is he, is he get any I uh, Obviously, since when I got my first England vest, he was there at the England schools. Yeah. And obviously, he was he loved it. He was crying. He was on the phone to my nan and my granddad, and I was just there, pretty shell shocked because I actually went into that comp like ranked twelfth and I came second. So yeah, so it's pretty, a big big jump. Yeah. 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 And because uh, uh, I got it, and he was happy, and then I did um, my first strongman comp in uh, May twenty twenty, and I did well. I was actually injured when I did it because I picked up a keg. To do some running about a week before at my mate in uh, Banbury, Paddy. Yeah. And I fell over and my knee swelled up to like a watermelon. Oh, shit. So this was like four days before the comps. I was going to pile up, but I said, you know what? It's, it's just a bruise. <laughs> I just yeah. did it. And I came fifth and I was really happy with that. And that was the most enjoyment I've had in any competition probably in like three, four years. Just because it was, except for the deadlift, it was four events that I'd never done before. Mm. And I was actually pretty good at it naturally. And I was like, mm. okay, I'm going to. Gotta keep going with this. That's interesting, though, isn't it? So, so because obviously when I when I went from powerlifting to strongman, the thing I loved about strongman or still do is like what you're saying, the variety, yeah, and the fact that you may beat me, I may beat you, we haven't got a clue, and actually you could be better all round, but I beat you on the day. Yeah. It could be, do you know what I mean? It could be tactics. Yeah. There's a lot, and I think that is for me that plays a big part towards it. Do you think that's why you now want to go towards this as opposed to the athletics? Um, yeah, I think I think. With winning and even placing a strongman, it's not just about who's the strongest person. It's about who's the best prepared, how are the events, yeah. um, who's got the best, the most of the events they're good at in that comp. Because sometimes, if it was just like a deadlift only comp, then I'd be pretty confident. But if it's something like 
uh, yoke, which I'm very new to, then I'd probably be a bit more tentative. So, I think. So, do you like that then? Do you like not being the best at something? Yeah, because it makes you want to train. Because I'm training at good at those events, which I'm very new to, or I'm very not so good at compared to the yeah. others. Because like, uh, when I first started in September, I'd done no no heavy lifting on my back, so like yoke, uh, really farmers. Um, monster dumbbell, all that kind of stuff, which is very specific to strongman. Mm. And I've just over the last three, four months, got to a point where I'm actually really happy with where I'm at with them now. And I know that even though they're not my best events, I know I can place well in a competition with them. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I'm sure you've sort of studied strongman already, but it's about being decent at everything. Yeah. You can be amazing at something, but at the end of the day, you're better to put your time into everything that's lower. I've actually got this on my wall here, which is what I do with all my athletes, where yeah. We rank what, what you can do at the minute, then look at where you want to be, and then you pick out the weaknesses. Because, uh -huh. again, it's important to do that, right? If yeah, you, definitely. I mean, all right, you could be a one-trip pony and be the best presser in the world or whatever, yeah. but you're not really a strong one, then, are yeah. you? You're, you're Specific. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you're a strong one athlete, I guess. But So, with... Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. <laughs> so, with like your training background and stuff, then, what would you say has... Well, do you think any of your stuff has... has Travelled over to strongman. Do you think it's helped you? Because surely they're yeah, exposing. Definitely. definitely, I think um, with the strongman, whether it's a, a deadlift, a log press, an axle press, or anything which is like very quick or one rep, I think because my shot put background and shot put is like a less than one second event really. So when you actually go and you release the shot put, it's usually within like one one and a half seconds. So something like a one rep max deadlift, I was naturally good at because I was training in com in training, but. I was just so explosive, so for mm -hmm. example, something like a rep comp with deadlift or a rep comp with log, I wasn't so good at because I didn't have that muscular endurance, I didn't have that ability to keep going past the three, four rep range with a, with a heavy weight. Mm -hmm. So I think definitely the explosive helps with like the one rep, the two rep stuff, but I've definitely got to work hard on making sure that I can rep out at the events and competition, which yeah. I'm doing now, which I've definitely improved, especially with the log, because Obviously, I can do barbell pressing but with a log on your neck. It's kind of a different feeling, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. pressing it. So I was doing sets of five with like 100 kilo uh, at the start of the uh, September. And I was, I was struggling to get all five sets done. I was getting to the point where I'd get to about halfway up and drop it because I couldn't get it. Yeah. But now I'm probably about 15, 17 and a half kilo heavier on average on my sets yeah. of five. So I know that that isn't really strength gains. It's just psychological and also like just fitness. Yeah, building your lungs. Yeah, I think as well, like obviously... Like, especially with, uh, I try and teach as much as I can, like, that the more reps you're able to do per session, the stronger you'll be. Yeah. And if you can figure that out, then you'll win. Because it's like, for example, you pull 400, right? Yeah. But if you were to try and pull more than 400, but, but in a better form, better, you know, like, consistency, uh, and continue to go further, then obviously it's about the reps. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, isn't it? Like, because you've got the brute strength. Yeah. You know that. And, and and again, going back to that, um, you, you know, the four hundred. Obviously, you know, openly, I'm sure you're saying like you got a lot of shit for it. Yeah. You know, and 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 the thing is, when you look at something first time, it's easy to for keyboard warriors just to give you a load of shit because at the end of the day, they think, oh yeah, it doesn't look right. This, that, and the other. You you're young and blah blah whatever you want to say. But at the end of the day, you're that's you natural. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I'm not saying whether you're on gear or not. I mean, natural as in like that's how you move, right? Yeah. So now for for strongman. I'm excited to see what you do because at the end of the day, well, it's just, it says it what it is, isn't it? You, you've got 400 deadlift when you've not even really, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean, mastered everything yeah, yet. Definitely. Um, so yeah, for, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think like, you know, once you work around the full work, you know, um, the basis of all the strongman equipment, you're going to be a solid athlete. Yeah, I hope so. What, what, what would you say is your weakest area if you've got like uh, some of its highlights? Um, well, obviously I haven't done every single event yet because... I obviously at the moment I'm just having to go at everything I can, which is at the Loughborough Gym, at serious strength. And uh, I'd say my weakest event at the moment is probably monster dumbbell because I know I can press overhead really well with like a barbell or an axe or a log. I can probably do like 150 to 170. So I've done 170 on a barbell. But even though the dumbbell is only one arm, I'd always think I can do at least half. I'm, I've hit 75 today and it was a lot harder than like doing 150 on a barbell. Yeah. So it's one about that balance really flinging up right and getting in the right position straight away because if you're getting on your shoulder and you're not it's not in the right position it's, it's annoying yeah. and I mean you're like trying to look up and breathe and it starts to hurt because it's digging into your, your trap and it's like, you want to get it right first time so it's yeah. all about cleaning it right before you can press it right yeah and as well that 
the only thing that's going to benefit that really is the time, isn't it? Because yeah. you're going to just get better at it and, and work, you know, work through. So something that I want to uh, obviously go into as well is autism. And a minute ago, you told me Tourette's, which I didn't realise. Yeah. So just talk us through, well, first of all, like what is autism and what is Tourette's? So in a basic form. Autism, so autism, uh, people that are autistic, whether it's a man or a woman, they have different tendencies to atypical people, which is like people who are normal. Mm. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know about normal. I don't know the right word. I don't know about normal. I'm not normal. Uh, anyway, but, um, normal is normal. So things such as understanding language, emotion, sarcasm, body language, um, uh, that kind of stuff. So if someone said to an autistic person in a certain tone, they may take it differently to what they meant because they don't understand how that works. Or if, for example, you're in a multiple people com- uh, conversation, they don't know when to talk, they don't know when to button, they don't know when to stop. So it's all about like how to function in society the way that society wants it. Mm. So with autism, it's just like people, they act slightly different in all the areas, but uh, they obviously work on trying to fit in. But to be honest, most people don't need to fit in, they just need to uh, people to understand the difficulties they have. Yeah, so yeah. for me... I was really bad at socialising back in high school, so I started high school, year seven, year eight were pretty good, then in year nine it went downhill, because I had very little, no friends, and I just couldn't talk to people, and I didn't have the same interests as people, and I just couldn't fit in, so that's when I had to like kind of back out, because I was also, I guess I had quirks, and I got bullied a bit, so I had to kind of leave year nine and year ten, I was out of school, then I found uh, Northley, which is a private school, for people with autism, people who have been bullied, people who struggle with school, and it was like one on one learning. So okay. I managed to get my GCSEs that way. Uh, for about, I was there for two years, and I, I really helped my uh, confidence, my self esteem. So then when I went back into mainstream, went to college in 2019, and uh, obviously I was a lot better then because obviously I was 18, I've grown up, I've learned how the world works, and it's just a, a much better experience. Mm, it's good. So, do you like? Obviously, going from school to now, how different is it? Like, do, do you, uh, you've learned more things have you got as you've yeah, got your journey, right? So I don't know, I don't know too many autistic people, but I'm very hyper aware of my autism now. So I'll know if what I've said, the way I've said it, is a bit awkward, or if there's an awkward silence, or um, like for example, I, I don't know if this is true with all autistic people, but I can kind of tell. If, someone, if someone's autistic, yeah, it's kind yeah, of like yeah. a superpower. Yeah, so like, yeah. Um, back in the day, when I used to jiu jitsu with my parent, my dad, um, there was a, a young kid who was about uh, seven or eight years old, and I went. I was about 13, 14, I went up to my dad and his dad, I said, uh, not in a bad way, but uh, maybe go to CAMS and see if you get any checkups, because the way he's acting was how I acted. Yeah, yeah. And they, they were like, oh no, it's, 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 just, it's just his thing. And I realised that about two years ago, I got diagnosed with autism, so yeah. I was like, okay, I told the future. So you got powers. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know what, it's, it's, so I know a f- quite a few people that are autistic, and it, for someone to, to think that someone's autistic, it makes you go, okay, right, how do I act, what do I do? And actually, it's just about being aware, isn't yeah. it? Because like, at the end of the day, it, it, it just means that how you take things in is different. Yeah, the right? way you process the information. Yeah. But so, so have you found... How have you stru- How did that make you struggle? Do you know what I mean? Like, wh- is there certain things that you struggled with? Yeah. So especially when I was younger, stuff such as sarcasm and joking. Yeah. Uh, for example, someone could say a joke, and I wouldn't. I'd take it to heart, or I wouldn't realise they were joking. Or someone could be serious, and I think they're joking because the way they speak. Yeah. So it's always about how to how do I process that information, the way they want me to receive it. Yeah. And it was a uh, that was always a struggle. But now I'd say ninety five percent of the time I can do it. I still have those times where. If I've got, got a new friend or a new friend group and I'm, I'm meeting new people, they might say something in a joking way. I don't know how to process it. So I think just through experience, you learn how to do that. Do you think one of the, like, I mean, this might t- sound too simple, but do you think one of the things is just to speak to them? Yeah, definitely. Do you I, know what I mean? Because yeah. you saying that makes me, so so I'm quite, sometimes I could say shit and th- not realise I said it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just because of the type of person I am. I mean, obviously, I, I know you a bit anyway, so we've chatted a few times, and you yeah. probably know if I was messing around, but do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes yeah. I said, and that would make me feel like, shit, I can't say anything now to him. Cause yeah. <laughs> I think um, if 
if it's a new person who's makes my best mate, I can I can trust them. If it's my best yeah, mate, you know through and them. it's their yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. and then I can trust them. If it's just it's a random person at a nightclub who's I mean, out, I'm out in the smoking area, my mate's just having a pint or something, and they just came up saying something weird, I'd probably just ignore it. I'd or I'd just brush it off. I wouldn't really take yeah. any notice of it because. To be honest, especially in lights out, if people are drunk, they yeah, don't know well, what they're saying. You say that, no, I try and ignore everyone on that. If you, <laughs> if you listen to anyone on a night out, you're yeah. probably going to get into a fight. Or... No, I don't drink really, so uh, my, in, my 2021, I drank about four or five times, so yeah. most of the time I go, I go clubbing, I'm completely sober because I'm the driver. Yeah. And also, I don't really like drinking because... I don't. I just don't like the taste of it. I don't try to have like a leak or something. Yeah, it's best way, mate. Like, yeah, yeah it doesn't get anywhere in life. Yeah. Does it? Let's be honest. So, okay, right. So, obviously, thanks like for for sharing that and stuff because it is interesting. Like, because at the end of the day, again, for people who who maybe listen to this, might might be like, what what is it? What does it do? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and Tourette's does that play a, a difference? What, what does that do? So, apart so the autism, I'd say actually goes well in the competing and the training because it's kind of like yeah. you're really focused on something but the Tourette's it can like it can hinder because you sometimes have type I'm on medication for my Tourette's but sometimes uh, if I'm stressed if I'm just tired my, my tics come out more so I could sometimes I'll be driving and like, my fingers just be doing this and it's really annoying or when I'm sat on the couch watching TV just doing nothing if I'm just sat still I'll be doing this and I'll be doing all this work and it's kind of like when I'm busy doing stuff I I don't notice them. I'm not doing them. You focus. If I'm just yeah. sat still, I do them more. Mm. And something like um, when I was younger, they were much worse. But um, as you grow up, kind of Tourette's with age, it gets better. Yeah, well, for most that. people. Yeah. Some people, if they have really severe Tourette's, they um, obviously they only get a tiny bit better. But back when I was like 14 and younger, they were much worse, and it was kind of hindering my ability to do stuff such mm. as like. Uh, just sit still for more yeah. than five minutes. Thing is, when when you say Tourette's, everyone thinks that Swearing. extreme. Yeah, yeah, they think you've just scored someone a cunt when you didn't mean to call. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's, yeah. It's like that TV program. Like, pff, I don't know. Can we laugh? I don't know. Maybe we can. Maybe we can't. But I, I, that I, TV I, program that you, you used to see, and it's like, yeah. you know, everyone's like, oh, but I want to do that. It's like, no, you don't. No, <laughs> that is actually. I'll tell like, you now. Back, I used to have some verbal ticks. They weren't bad ticks. They were just like the word. I used to be addicted to chicken. Well, I still am. <laughs> But I used to just say it like all the time, no matter what circumstance I was in, and uh, it was kind of annoying. But I couldn't understand. You can see, you can feel them coming though, yeah. Yeah. So with the tick, so I have a nose one. I have a, I have all this stuff in my face, my fingers, yeah. my toes, and it's best to just do them because if I hold it and don't do it yeah. for like five ten minutes, then I'll just be angry and really stressed. Yeah. It does get annoying, but. Um, yeah, just stuff like. Do you know what? It's crazy though. I'm not diagnosing myself with Tourette's, but you say these things. But I, over time, and, and I mean this genuinely, right? So I've been at points where I've been very, very anxious, very stressed. You know, just for different life yeah. stuff. And I've at points had th- like things that I'll, I'll continuously do. Yeah. And and I think that can just be a. It's a psychological thing, isn't it? Like yeah. A, like you. I think if you see stress, do something like. Back in primary school, like, this girl had like a nose twitch, and I didn't have that that tick. But every time I saw her do, I saw her do that in like a, in the school play. Yeah, I did yeah. it once, and then ever since like year six, I've still had it because I saw her do it. So it's her fault. Yeah, it's have her you fault. told her this? <laughs> I, 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 I can't remember who it was. <laughs> but it was some sort of guy in the school play. She did like a nose twitch, and I noticed it for some reason. And ever since then, I've got like a nose twitch. <laughs> and obviously, I got my finger twitches, my toes, my uh, my neck, and it's just annoying. The good thing is when I drive. Because I'm got music blasted, I'm screaming with the, the music the lyrics. I don't, I'm not perfectly fine. Yeah, so you that, just concentrate. That's on the that. one time that if it was bad, I wouldn't really. So no, try. no, no silence in your car. Then. Yeah. Unless I'm trying to. Uh, oh, the worst thing is when when I pull up to the side of the car to Paradise Park, and the car behind me gets really close. So I oh, just so you feel rushed. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you just got. You said you just go Panic straight on and find another space. You need to get a car that just parks and just yeah. does it. What's it? Tesla's or whatever they're called. Yeah, mate has that. The camera where you can just see exactly where you. Yeah. Going. To be fair, it's on my car, but I don't dare do it. Yeah. I was like, whatever. I'll yeah, trust you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But okay, so right with those two being said, then do they affect your training? Or if they do, how do they affect your training? Positive or negative? So the autism. I'd say it definitely affects it positively in the sense that when I get a goal or something I want to do, I'll obsessively think about that in my head. So mm. every night before bed, I'd say every night, 
last five, six years, no matter what I was trying to achieve, I'd always mentally imagine what I was going to do the next day or the day mm -hmm. after or in five months' time. So, like, I remember um, back in... Can I just say, did you get taught that or did you, is that what you did? I, I, that's what I did. Then I realised when I used to do college, that's actually a, a psychological thing. Yeah, a, I used to always do it naturally. It's one of the sections that we've got actually just been recorded for the Strictly yeah. Pocket. And, it, and it's visualising Yeah, I, I, I used to do it automatically, but then I'm still learning about mental imagery, positive reinforcement through college. And yeah, it's I realised I'm doing that anyway, so it must be a good thing. So again, you've got powers there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so stuff like when I was doing shop, but before bed, I put my headphones on for about half an hour. I'd have the lights off, close my eyes, and just imagine... Me being in that circle, feeling the shot hit my neck and doing exactly what I want to do, and then imagining it going 20 metres and screaming and saying yes. And the same with like um, the 400 kilo deadlift, like back, I did want to attempt it in like uh, September, June time, but then obviously July, I got COVID, I got ill and all that, yeah, and yeah, yeah. lost weight. But um, before, the few days before the 400 kilo attempt on that Saturday, uh, every night I was like, okay, I was doing it, but I was trying to keep positive. So I was thinking 30 kilo PB, that's quite a lot. I was kind of talking myself out of it, but I said, you know what, I can do it. And I kept mm -hmm. saying I can do it. And for the first few days, I was like, oh, I don't know. Then last two days before, I was like, yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, and you that got you through it, right? Yeah. Thing is, like, we all know, don't we? Like, I'm sure you know from your experience of just using that, if you say you're going to do it, you will do it. Yeah. Right? And it's that thing, isn't it? I mean, all right, within reason. Yeah. Like, you say 600 kg, oh, there's a bit yeah. of a difference, right? But... I'm I'm a, I'm massive on that as well because I think I think it's especially when like, I'm working with athletes like sometimes they'll have a subject where they're like look I'm not feeding hundred in fact the other day I was speaking to a guy 130 kg absolute unit uh, you know he's got everything in place that make should make him an awesome athlete right but the one thing that's missing is his head because yeah. his head is telling him he can't do it right and 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 that's the one thing I want to work in him now and that's what to me coaching is about it's not just about telling what someone to lift we can all do that yeah so no I, I think it's huge and like to be able to master that is very very powerful isn't definitely. it definitely so with your autism that that sort of helps that is there any downsides to the autism with with training or um yeah is it i definitely what's do. your spatial awareness like what's that i know apparently apparently it's good because i saw roots get you apparently apparently spatial awareness is to do roots what what is it exactly <laughs> Isn't it like going to new 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 places and stuff like that, or like certain materials? Oh, oh yeah. So senses. Yeah. So with my autism, when I was younger, especially senses were always messed up. So they still are now. So like hearing, when I was younger, well, I'd be in bed, or I'd hear like a tick or a clock or anything, and I'd be able to get to sleep, and then stuff like feel. So until I was about fourteen, I literally never wore a pair of trousers. Yeah. Pretty much 14. <laughs> really? and I, well, I wore like some joggers, but I never wore a pair of jeans. Oh, right. I thought you meant just literally bollock naked for No, I meant I, I, I was wearing shorts for the first like 14 years of my life. So yeah. even in like primary school when it was winter, you used to have those like, those those kind of ba brown trousers you wear at primary school. Yeah. I was always having to get exception to wear shorts because I just couldn't wear trousers because <laughs> I didn't like the feel. And then uh, taste, like my, my diet is quite limited because uh, if I smell a food or if I feel a food in my mouth, even if I haven't swallowed it, I just, I might puke or something, like, stuff like pizza, people will love pizza, I go up with my mates and they eat pizza, and, like, back when I was younger, if I was in a room and someone was eating pizza, I'd have to leave, because mm. I'd just feel really nauseous. Really? But now... What's it, what, what it about pizza? Is it, or is it just, just, you've got something uh, about it? The cheese or something, I, I'm not sure exactly, is it happened, like, my mum's cooked lasagna the other day, so I don't know how you can eat that, like... I know that with it comes. I've got lasagna tonight. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 if I smell food and to me it doesn't smell nice, there's no way I'm putting that in my mouth because I know that with me the taste comes from the smell as well. Yeah. So if I can smell a food and it's, it smells nice, even if I don't like it in the end, I've tried it. If the food doesn't smell nice, I'm not going to try it because, like, um, I didn't eat chicken properly. I ate chicken when I was younger, but then I went up for about five or six years where I didn't eat many meats. I was eating like sausage and chips all the time just because I'm, oh, I was so limited. Yeah. I was eating just like a cracker bread with some chocolate spread, crisps. I was eating very minimal things, like 10 things max, like three or four years. Mm. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to try and uh, widen this. I tried baking for the first time when I was like 11. I started eating chicken again when I was like 13, 14. Um, I didn't actually ever eat mints or beef till yeah. about two years ago. 
Wow. So it's like, like with foods and stuff like that. So I feel like it's it's on, no, sorry, with everything, sorry, not just foods, but I feel like it's on your terms, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's not like... Pressure. Yeah. yeah like and, and, and I feel like, I feel like that's probably a big part of autism, is it? Where it's yeah. about... Definitely. So things such as like when I used to go to CAMS for my appointments, I'd like to know when the appointment is at least two weeks in advance just because if it gets the like a few days before i feel like even though i don't have any plans apart from that because when i was younger I did, what i did was play xbox and train mm-hmm. um i didn't i didn't like it so i'd always like to know what i'm doing on that specific day and what time of the day so whether it be what time i'm going to school what time i'm waking up what time i'm leaving what time i'm going to train and what time got the appointment or time uh, all this stuff I like to have routine so yeah, routine yeah. is quite a big thing with autism yeah and uh, I think when you've got routine it helps like back in 20 last year I was just I didn't have a coach at this point so I was just training and I, would, I didn't mind too much because I could train whenever I want I was training dead three times a week and I was, I was just doing all this stuff but now I've got the routine and structure I'm definitely progressing faster mm. not just because I've got the program but because it's more logical and I'm, I'm better suited to it yeah, but you know something from the stuff that you said a minute ago, and obviously that what you're saying there. I feel like, well, first of all, did you do you feel what's the word? Not ashamed, but do you feel like pressured because the, you have these tendencies? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Do you do you feel anxious? Do you feel like um, different? Do you feel different? I definitely. Uh, I, I used to. I don't think I do so much anymore. But with the autism, you get obsessions. Mm. So like one. I first tried the lots of dumbbell about two or three months ago. I was bad at it. So I made my mission every time I went to my gym, no matter what gym it was, to put a dumbbell yeah. on my shoulder and press it. And obviously Mark was like, okay. Because obviously Mark understands me. Yeah, Mark knows yeah, yeah. that I got obsessed on that because I knew that it was, a, it was a weak event. And I got and I, I started to get good here. I pressed the uh, the 70 kilo dumbbell, the normal dumbbell. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, okay, now you've got that your system. We'll go on to the next thing. And it, what the next thing was like... Uh, I can't remember what it was, but there's always something where I get a bit too fixated on it. Yeah. So yeah. I have to do it for a bit, then I. Then but again, understand. you can't fight that, right? Just yeah. let it be, yeah. do your thing, and then move on. Yeah. yeah. So where I was going with that then, like, because, like, so obviously some people in your position can feel like you know under pressure and and anxious and like you're different or yeah. whatever, whatever you want to say, right? But actually, a lot of the things that you say is the route to success. Yeah. Right. So when you think about it, like. Being aware of like all, all the foods that you eat and stuff. I mean, all right, it's for a different reason, but yeah. still, being aware, being having to look into your foods, this, that, and the other, makes you think about it. Therefore, you're going to be successful at some point because you're really focused on, yeah. on that sort of stuff. With your, um, you know, the fact that like uh, you're training everything that you're doing, being obsessed with things actually again will lead into it. Yeah. Structure, one of the best things you can possibly do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's something that most people don't have because. People like to live a loose lifestyle or whatever, but you know it's like my diary. Like, you know, some people think it's over the top, but I literally know I'm doing every single like hour of the day, and yeah. that's to me that's success because then you know yeah. where you are, you know where your time is, you know what you're spending it on, and everything yeah. else. So actually, like the stuff that you that you do as such, it's going to lead you to success, isn't it? Yeah. So, with your um, like with your future, then like what what's the future like for you? Where do, where do you want to go? I mean, obviously. So obviously, I'm enjoying it still. Yeah, I got short term and long term goals. Obviously, this year I'm not going to do too many competitions. It's mainly just get used to all the events, get to a good level. So I do plan to do the I'm 23, well the junior qualifier and final. Then I plan to break the the 23 world record in comp, which is it's fourth at the moment. So my aim is to pull four eleven. I'm actually gonna probably sign up to the Ultimate Strength Series one. Yeah. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Eleventh of June. So yeah. I like, so the last uh, the, the junior finals like start of April. So I will have at least eight weeks to train for it. Yeah. And that'll be the first time I prep for a deadlift comp because when I was doing them last year, like when I pulled the three seventy one in June, I I need to sign up for that comp two days, three days before because like mm. three days before that I pulled like three forty for a double on the yeah, stiff Yeah, I bump. remember. Uh, yeah. I, mean, and then I just to decided it. to do it, and then um, obviously at this point I was speaking to Mark, but I wasn't being coached. He was letting, he was just letting me have free will, and uh, also got ill and I couldn't pull what I wanted. So now pulling the four hundred the other day was really mm. nice. But the, then um, I do want to have a look at the official strongman games because uh, my mate in America he was telling me that that's kind of the route you need to go if yeah. you want to get somewhere. Yeah. And uh, for the giant slide, especially. I was going to say you'll get giants going that way. Yeah. Luke, uh, I'm sure you see Luke Richardson. Yeah, yeah. So he, he that's the route he did. To be fair, Luke was well ready for it. 
and and argue if you were probably slightly better than him yeah. in ways. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I mean that's not to you know put him down where he is because he was a very very good powerlifter. Yeah, he was literally. Four hundred squat. Yeah, he was. I can't do that. He was the top of his game. Yeah. But the point is, do you need a four hundred squat to be? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you're better off to have your deadlift bigger because that's what's going yeah. to supplement you better into the into the strongman world. Um, and the other thing that's a bonus on you, not that we're comparing you and Luke, but the other thing that's a bonus on you is you've still got a lot of things to learn. Yeah. And you're in a very good place. Yeah. Which, and which, probably, I, mean? I was few years young. I'm twenty. I think he was twenty two when he started powerlifting. Yeah, I can't so, remember. To be honest, I was at the first OSG with him. The, the first one that he did that he won and it was actually amazing to see because yeah. I spoke to Luke prior to that anyway so I already knew him and yeah to be there and to see him go through like it was insane I like the events there as well like the bag toss because obviously a bag toss is pretty much a shot put thrown over head yeah 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 so I, and like the deadlift ladder explosively for you like, yeah. you're laughing aren't you I'm, I'm not too sure what the other events are I know the deadlift ladder I like yeah. that kind of stuff yeah but. they rotate it a little bit but they tend to yeah they tend to stick to the same events for about two or three years just because yeah. they, they keep the kit obviously yeah but yeah no it'd be a good route so, what is the record? Uh, who holds the record at the minute? So, as far as I'm aware, I had um, before I did the competition in June, uh, Rihanna Lovelace and Luke Davies told me that Kevin Lee pulled 410 in 2008. And I think when he pulled it, then that was actually the world record anyway for strongman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tied with like Brian Shaw or something. I think he was a few months before turning 23. And as far as I'm aware, I checked uh, Pablo because he pulled the thousand pound in competition the other in the. Uh, they're the champs. Yeah. Because I didn't know how old he was because I've had some people saying 23, some saying 24, some saying 25. And I finally found his date of birth on last. Right, I was saying, I thought he was about 25-ish, no? He's, tw he's 24 when he did that. Before. Right. So that's not the word. I thought if that was the word record, then I've got a few more years to go. Yeah. Yeah. But I was happy that. He, so so he's not got the record before then, so he's not nothing to do with uh, that. Well, I, was, I used to power. I think that was his first deadlift. Strong, I think that was his first strong run comp. Right. Yeah, you're probably right actually because he, he he's, pulled, he's not uh, been around, does he? Three eighty three ninety was it in Parliton uh, oh, rules? Yeah. yeah. Which is no hitch, no suit, yeah. no straps. Yeah. But he probably could afford more, but you gotta be doing it to get it. Yeah, 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 no for sure. So yeah, so so that's the route you wanna go. So have you put everything else to bed now? Is that you just on strong one side of things? Yeah, uh, yeah, I will pick up the shot every now and again. I do plan to do uh one comp in the summer, which is the under twenty three K champs. Because I've won it the last two years. Last year I won it. I didn't really do much training, but I do plan to do a few weeks training before it just to get the third title. Then yeah. next year I get my fourth title. Then I'm a senior. Then so then I won't be able to get that anymore. So I just want to get all the because I've won under seventeens, under twenty, under twenty, under twenty three, under twenty three, under twenty two. I guess that's so just because that. you know you can, right? Yeah. And you've just told everyone on camera that you just done to do a few weeks training. Yeah. <laughs> just so just to trump them when they when yeah. they do it. Um, okay, so to wrap up then really for this, because um, we definitely cut, over, cut off on the last one, I had to restart it, but what, like, what sort of advice would you give to people, let's just say young, young guys who maybe don't take training that serious, maybe autistic people as well, do you know what I mean, like yeah. someone that's autistic and, and that sort of thing, like, what, um, what would you give advice? Uh, I'd say take your time. Have a little bit of fun. Have fun with it, especially. There's no point in going into a structured, a super structured program where you focus on this, this, and that. Have some variety at the start. Don't go straight into it and trying to become more stronger than a year. Try and become a better person, a better athlete, and then as you go through the years, then you'll be going to competitions. You'll be placing. I'd say to give it, give it time. Take your time. Mm. I was just about to say, basically, you're gonna say slow down, take your time. Yeah, yeah. Which is very wise of you to say like it really yeah. is and I think obviously that's something you've learned clearly but it's so hard and you know what like you know we all sit there don't we like I, I do it sometimes and I teach people to not do it yet I find myself doing it yeah. where you're looking at other people on Instagram you're looking at what they can do yeah everyone trying to do the next session yeah of course it, you know it, it's one of the things where it's healthy because obviously that's the hunger and that's the the drive the ambition to actually be better yeah but it's unhealthy because you don't even know what they're doing. No. You, you don't know their background. You don't know what they're going for. You know, and especially when you see people like constantly putting up PR, 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 PR. And it's like, you know, you might look at them and think, fucking hell, I'm not PRing that much. <laughs> Actually, they're probably broken. They're probably, I don't know, threw, threw their eyeball on gear and they're about to drop dead. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, unfortunately, that is a thing yeah. as well. 
or, or, they, or, or their lifestyle's completely different, you know? I mean, something that I always try and remember is I've got two kids, I've got on this, I've got two businesses, Sarah yeah. runs a business. Do you know what I mean? You've got to take all these things into account. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, and it, it, it really is like wise words to, to sort of look, to be able to say as well. But mate, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It really is Appreciate a pleasure. It. Thank you very much. You've, you've out-muscled me as well, because I think you've out-angled yeah. me out here. I've closed the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just cut you off anyway. Yeah, yeah. But no, mate, honestly, good luck with everything for the future. And obviously, good luck to you as well. No, Hopefully you can get the 400 in the next six Yeah, months. well, that, but that's the funny thing, right? We were so, racing, uh, aren't we? <laughs> it, 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 here's me going, telling you I was doing the 400, then he's fucking gone and poured it before. <laughs> I'll give you that one, Thanks. Mate. But mate, appreciate it. Thank appreciate you very much. It. Thanks.